Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to two-way repeated measures ANOVA. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. ANOVA is an acronym and it stands for Analysis of Variance. And here I'm going to be looking at a particular type of two-way repeated measures ANOVA. We could think of this as a two-way within subjects design. That's what we'll be testing, a two-way within subjects design. So it is a type of two-way repeated measures ANOVA in which you have two within subjects factors. If you had one within subjects factor and one between subjects factor, that would still be a two-way repeated measures ANOVA. Oftentimes we refer to that design as a mixed ANOVA. So in this type of a two-way repeated measures ANOVA, we have two within subjects factors. The same participants are observed across two within subjects factors. So I'll use an example to illustrate this type of two-way repeated measures ANOVA. Let's say that you had 30 participants and you wanted to measure them on some sort of relaxation instrument with a variety of possible settings. So they're given this measurement to measure how relaxed they are in four possible conditions. A room that's bright and loud, a room that's bright and quiet, a room that's dark and loud, or dark and quiet. So there's two within subjects factors there. You have light and sound. Each one has two levels, bright and dark, and loud and quiet. So when you combine them, you have four conditions. So notice that in this design, each participant is exposed to every combination of the with of the two within subjects factors of the two independent variables. Both types of lighting conditions and both types of sound conditions. So because each independent variable has two levels and we have two independent variables, we have four combinations. For a two-way repeated measures ANOVA, we have three null hypotheses. The first null hypothesis states that the means of the levels of the within subjects factor 1 are equal. So this is the first within subjects factor, what is called this factor 1. The second null hypothesis is the means of the levels of the within subjects factor 2 are equal. So we'll say factor 1 in this case is light and factor 2 is sound. So you have a null hypothesis for looking at the means of the within subjects factor light and the within subjects factor sound. Those would be referred to as main effects, the effect of light and the effect of sound, factor one and factor two. The third null hypothesis is that there is no interaction effect. In this case, light times sound. That interaction, you would not have an interaction effect for light times sound. Taking a look now the elements of a two-way repeated measures ANOVA. You have two independent variables. Both of these independent variables are within subjects factors. Thinking about those within subjects factors for each one, you have two or more categorical related groups. So in the example that I've been using, there's just two categorical related groups for each within subjects factor. However, you can have more than two levels. For example, for the within subjects factor light, you could have bright, normally lighted, and dark. You could have three levels of that variable. Also with the two-way repeated measures ANOVA, you have one dependent variable. And in the example I'm using, this was the instrument used to measure relaxation level. So that level of relaxation would be the dependent variable. And the dependent variable for a two-way repeated measures ANOVA needs to be measured 
at the interval or ratio level of measurement. So an example of how these two are different, well, both of them are considered continuous variables. And the way they're different is that ratio has a true zero. So on an interval level of measurement, let's use the Fahrenheit scale, for example, you have equal distance between the observation points, but you don't have a true zero. Zero degrees Fahrenheit doesn't represent an absence of heat. If you're looking at the ratio level of measurement, consider the Kelvin temperature scale. You have equal distance between the observations on the Kelvin scale, and the zero does represent an absence of heat. That's a ratio level of measurement. Now taking a look at the assumptions for two-way repeated measures ANOVA. When we are looking to analyze data with a statistic, those data need to meet certain assumptions. And in the case of a two-way repeated measures ANOVA, there are two assumptions, the assumption of normality and the assumption of sphericity. So looking at the assumption of normality, to meet this assumption, we need to have a normally distributed dependent variable for every combination of the levels of within subjects factors. In the case of a two-way repeated measures ANOVA, of course, we have two within subjects factors. So looking at this example that I've been using with the light and sound, we would have four combinations. Every combination of the levels of the two within subjects factors would be four levels, bright and loud, bright and quiet, and dark, loud, and dark and quiet. We have two levels for each of the within subjects factors, so we have four combinations there. Each combination represents a variable, and we would need to test each variable, each of these four variables, to see if the variable is normally distributed. And typically we use a few different methods and then consider the results together to make a determination to see if a variable is normally distributed. One test could be the Shapiro-Wilk test. And in that case, we usually use an alpha of 0.05. And the Shapiro-Wilk test produces a probability value, a p-value, and we compare that p-value to the alpha. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we would take that as an indication that we are violating the assumption of normality, that our variable is not normally distributed. If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, that would lead us to believe that we are looking at a normal distribution. You also want to consider for each variable the skewness and kurtosis, as well as taking a look at the histogram for each of these combinations. The next assumption we have for a two-way repeated measures ANOVA is the assumption of sphericity. And the assumption of sphericity says that we have an equality of variances of the differences for every combination of the levels of the two within subjects factors. The assumption of sphericity is often tested with a Mockley's test and again, an alpha of 0 0.05 is typical for this test. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we would assume that we have not met the assumption of sphericity. And if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we would assume we have met the assumption of sphericity. It's important to note that the assumption of sphericity doesn't apply if there are only two levels of the within subjects factor. So in this example, we have two within subjects factors and each of them only has two levels. So in this particular example I'm using with the light having two levels of bright and dark and the sound having two levels of loud and quiet, we would not have to meet the assumption of sericity. It would not apply in the case where you only have two levels for each of the within subjects factors. I hope you found this introduction to two-way repeated measures ANOVA to be useful. Thanks for watching.